So, yeah. So, replicant is a. Uh, hmm? Can everyone hear me? Yeah, so Replicant is a fully free Android distribution approved by the FSF, but the hardware is run. In, the hardware it runs on is not fully free, like it's smartphone, and you have. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll see the detail later on that. Uh, so Replicant, the website is replicant.us. We exist since September 2009. We are currently based on Lineage OS, so we are working on uh, two Android versions at the same time, so Android 6, uh, because we support a lot of devices with it. Unfortunately, the last security update is from October 2017, and uh, we are also working on porting all that on uh, Android 9, and it's still a work in progress of, the, of today. So on Replicant 6, we support about like uh, 10 devices. Uh, with smartphone tablets, uh, and we have about like uh, two like full-time contributors. We have more than two contributors, but equivalent is like two people full-time. So, uh, like we, as the distribution is fully free, we still want like to have. Um, like minimum set of features that make it still useful, like the display working, the graphics are fast enough to be usable, we can make uh, like uh, phone calls, we have sound working and so on, but for instance some uh, auxiliary feature like GPS or camera, like if it doesn't work for us it's not the end of the world, but we still try to make them work if we can. So sometimes we even like add support for more features in later release, so so this is a smartphone, it's a Galaxy S3, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, the, the thing is cut. So anyway, uh, so this is a system and a chip, so it's a chip with uh, many things inside, like the main CPU, SD controller, like display controller and whatnot, and it's connected here to another chip where there's the modem going on, so this interacts with the cell phone tower and, uh, yeah, and the SIM card. And it's connected to a bus called HSIC, so it's it's a subset of USB. For those who know, like there is a file for USB to be able like to talk to device through long cable. Here, obviously, you don't need a long cable, so they took that out. So it has also some nice property uh, we'll see later. Um, so why are we like using Android? Uh, so, long time ago, there were even like uh, new Linux smartphones and things like this. Unfortunately, like it's uh, not very well adapted uh, for uh, big fingers. Like you need to have uh, like all the application adapted. Uh, device also lack a keyboard. The DPI of the screen is like very high and the screen is very small. So you really like need to adapt all the application and on Android it's already done. Uh, so the issue with that is like uh, GNU Linux, a lot of uh, low level things are better, you even have package management and a lot of things Android is still lacking today. Uh, we also inherit like a uh, huge unknown code from Google, <laughs> so that's not great, it's not like uh, reviewed by the usual free software community and worked on, it's like more like code drop and we work on top of it. And unfortunately, it's also meant to run proprietary software, like Google, it's meant to run like proprietary application, not to empower users, so that's not that great, but yeah, still. So, uh, yeah, um, so the hardware vendor wants to like uh, write code as fast as possible and in the code they write they want to support as many hardware features as possible. So the code quality is like very variable. Uh, in one kernel, like in the past, there was one driver rewritten three times for the same hardware, so in the same kernel. Uh, so Android like takes, uh, Android can use a kernel like that, so it handles the hardware abstraction at the framework level, so the framework stocks to some hardware abstraction layer that at the end of the day uh, use some library that does the abstraction basically. So it enables like to break all the kernel API. So it's getting better now with uh, treble and uh, generic kernel image from Google, but we are still not there. And it's just like you can still like break stuff uh, like that. 
So uh, this is also uh, around like some people from the free and open source community do like they don't like bad code quality. But like even if the code is bad, like if the vendor publish it, uh, we can still like uh, like clean it up. Uh, like for instance, in the Linux kernel, you have the staging uh, area where you can send code and then people clean it up. And if it's not cleaned up or worked on, it's removed. Uh, even like you can even like if you don't understand the driver add prints to do reverse engineering on the source code that you that is too messy to understand so it's still better than having binaries so at the end of the day and we depend on that source code obviously so now we have like something that's a bit uh, maybe controversial we will do a, a play about uh, making like smartphones sustainable to see like what it looks in practice and different point of view and then just like slides with bullet points so yeah so what i'm about to tell you is <laughs> subversive yeah <laughs> so subversive mode on so yeah um once upon a time dave didn't want to buy a, to buy a smartphone because nearly all present day smartphones are, are kind of a Stalin stream. According to a Shastan man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But because of peer pressure and advertising and because of his employment or exploitation. <laughs> you need to be reachable at all times. <laughs> okay, okay. I finally bought a smartphone. They bought an Android smartphone off the shelf. The smartphone has a removable battery. This, this smartphone will self-destruct in five years. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I know that at the time of buying, man? Two years later. Um, what? I'm sorry that your battery ran out. Game over, buy a new phone. Play again, insert a new battery and continue. Yeah. Dave <laughs> buys a new battery. Uh, consumer like Dave are telling me. I'm a human being. Uh, um, <laughs> what now? I'm sorry, Dave, your smartphone ran out of software support. <laughs> ah, God damn it! <laughs> Dave doesn't want to destroy the planet, so... Uh, no person... Mm, you shall not pay... Mm, I shall not buy a new smartphone, man. I can still run Android apps. Security! <laughs> my smartphone is full of backdoors anyway. <laughs> You're part of my threat model. Uh, shit, they become more and more clever. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Dave, the Android application don't support your own Android version anymore. Ah, crap! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I'll install Lineage OS. I'm sorry, Dave, you will lose your data in the process. <laughs> I'll migrate the data myself. Do it yourself is great. Dave, Dave, remain with us. <laughs> I don't trust you, man. Piss off. Leave me alone. Two years later, Dave was happily ever after, um, happily, <laughs> and forgot about his smartphone and all the back doors. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. Line address drop it for your smartphone. <laughs> Dave, oh, no. <laughs> uh, how is that possible? <laughs> Knock, knock, Dave. <laughs> Do you want the red pill? Yes or no? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, I want the red pill. <laughs> Dave, you be, you've been living in a dream. Until recently, Linux kernel in your phone was heavily modified. Our informations are scarce and sometimes outdated. But we deduced that in 2008, the device and chip manufacturers did that to improve the time to market. But who would care about the time to market when most humans will die with two degrees? Warning, anarcho ecolo communist terrorist detected. <laughs> Good idea. The kernel panic operation not permitted. So they abstract the kernel in libraries that are often non free. Like the like the Libril which implements the modern protocol and in some cases a backdoor too. <laughs> ah crap. So they own us. In summer, yes, but we have the devices, so we can still fight back. For instance, we have greater assurance of not being recorded, but if, 
If you left your phone on, on they know where you are. Crap. <laughs> You've trapped me. Because in the same location, they know I'm a part of the resistance now. Ah. I don't use a smartphone, so they don't know where I, where I am. By the way, welcome to the resistance. <laughs> <laughs> How to fight back? Do I need a light uh, soldering iron? <laughs> I have no definitive answer on that. Many things were tried in the past. Revolutions, assassinations, armed conflicts, theft, strikes, teaching, living in, in remote communities, regicides, and even making a bank. But besides remote communities and self-management spaces within the system, we didn't get rid of, the, of abuse of power yet. I mean, for smartphones, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? As of today, smartphones can't respect your freedom. They track you with a deadly precision. Our source in indicators on 10 to or 20 meters for GSM and 3G. By, by, but replacing more and more non-free software by free software limits the damage. We have several fully free software GNU Linux distributions and even Replicant, a fully free Android distribution. Replicant is almost as old as uh, Android. <laughs> <laughs> so if I've, I have a supported device with a removable battery, will it last longer with, with Replicant? Not yet. <laughs> so, yeah, now we will continue. Um. Uh, some sp some smartphones, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> some smartphones have longer software support, but they have batteries that cannot be easily removed. Others are meant to be repaired, but the software support is bad. So we lost. There are many, many smartphones being produced these years. You must learn that these rules are no different than the rules of a computer system. Sometimes they can, they can be bent, others can be broken. <laughs> uh, most modern smartphones have non-removable batteries. It's hopeless. <laughs> Free your mind. <laughs> do you think that the number of smartphones has anything to do with, with their strength? But how? We're going to hang up on, on this political system and then show these people what those in power don't want them to see. We're going to show them a world without power, a world without forced rules or controls or borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. We, where we go from there is a choice I leave to the people. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this was not planned. Like, yeah. guys, like five minutes before the talk to organize all this. So. Thank you, anyway. Let's get, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. So, uh, like, I, I will get back to the presentation now. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, um, so the, the issue is that uh, because of all that, we, like, decided to require uh, in replicant uh, for supporting a new phone that the phone or like tablet has a removable battery, uh, a replaceable battery, sorry. So like developer can like continue to support the, the device for a long term and change the battery. Like even if you need to open with tools, it's okay. But if you need like um, a, heat, uh, a heater to like detach the thing, it's like too complicated. So it also uh, make the device last longer and so on, and we can like uh, it's better for upstreaming things because upstreaming things takes time. So we need the device to like last longer, and it's better for people uh, buying second hand also because uh, you get like you can change the battery. You don't need to worry about like having 80% of the battery or 40% when you buy second hand. Uh, so if we look at like the device supported by Lineage OS now, uh, you have uh, like many with a removable battery still. Uh, yeah, we, we can't see, but this is the Samsung Galaxy S5 Neo uh, right here. Um, so the issue is that we also want like to uh, limit uh, like uh, privacy attacks. Uh, so the modem is running like fully non-free software. So we want to like isolate uh, the modem from like the system on the chip running Android and, and whatnot. So if you have shared memory, like uh, you have non-free software being able to use shared memory, like potentially to attack the Android system. So it's no go. We try to avoid the phone that enables that. Um, 
So like we, we saw before in the, the smartphone picture, uh, there is, in, for instance, in the case of the Galaxy S3 uh, HSIC bus uh, between the modem and the, the system on the chip. So it's like USB, so you may think it's uh, bad, like it could act uh, like a keyboard, but as far as I understand, it's the host that controls the reenumeration in this case. Uh, so the modem could still act like a keyboard, but has a very short time to do it, like when the modem boots uh, and the boot is controlled by the host, it could do that, but yeah. And still we will like try to look more into it to protect against this scenario even if it's like unlikely. Uh, some device we support also has a MyPi bus between the, the system on the chip and the modem. So in that case, we didn't look deep into it, but we think it shouldn't have like uh, DMA and things like that. So, uh, so I unfortunately, like if we had these requirements, uh, even like the, uh, the Galaxy S5 Neo is, has a like shared memory between the, the modem and the system on the chip, so that's not good. So remains only the APQ. So these are like supported by line address uh, right now. So it's a Qualcomm system on the chip, but without a modem. And the modem is separate. We didn't look in more into it uh, yet. So uh, the issue is that we supported Exynos device before, like the Galaxy S3, the Note 2, uh, and also like some OMAP devices, uh, many Samsung devices. So it would mean like if we support the APQ, uh, like we, we would need to drop all the device because we currently support because they are like not supported by line address and not even the same system on the chip. But we want to support the device longer, like we have a community that boots these devices, uh, especially the more recent one like uh, S3 and Note 2. Uh, and we would need to do like way more work for uh, the APQ. Uh, so we didn't go this route. Uh, and also we didn't know at the time that the APQ would be supported. Uh, so these are the one like supported by uh, Replicant 6 uh, that we could support with upstream kernel. Uh, so the S3, for instance, uh, Simon Shields uh, did a lot of work on it, and man it's uh, like mostly upstream. Some things are, many small things are still lacking, like I don't know, uh, like backlight control, or and some big things like the modem also uh, need to be upstream. Uh, we have also like the Note 2 that's also lacking. In addition to that, like uh, the display panel, we would need to like upstream some code that's already written in that case and the like uh, Note 2 for, uh, Galaxy Note 2 4G and Galaxy S3 4G have a different modem but maybe the modem is already upstream we didn't uh, look into it yet probably not booting the modem so, so. Uh, so if we want to make a device more sustainable we need uh, like upstream Linux um, on uh, like device we support basically uh, because people already have them uh, uh, known hardware that works in KDE. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, so we also have like good knowledge of these phones. Uh, so yeah, Th this is why we want to support them with upstream. Uh, there's still some limitation that would uh, like prevent us from like supporting this device like uh, for eternally. Uh, like RAM size, like if Android like requirements uh, grow too much in RAM size, we, we still have to drop the device. And since we tend to like drop device that are like the worst for freedom in the one we support, uh, like the non-free bootloader in itself uh, is a problem for that. It's also like incompatible with upstream Linux, so this is a problem. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I just said that. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, there is a U-boot port for the Galaxy S3. Uh, unfortunately, like the first bootloader, the first stage of the bootloader is signed, so it depends on like uh, BL1 is the first stage uh, bootloader for Exynos port 412, and it's like uh, distributed by Odroid, by Art Kernel who does the Odroid, and we can't redistribute it, unfortunately. So we are like someone from Replicant is uh, doing some research to like find if it's still possible to run fully free code because there is like a project called Xboot that's 
supposedly is able to run fully free code on Exynos 4412, but yeah, we will still uh, looking into that. And the issue with the, the stock bootloader is that it enable cache, uh, like data cache and um, the MMU. And like since 2003, like Linux is supposing that the bootloader is like disabling that just before loading Linux so that it's not, at least it doesn't leave that off, uh, that on before like loading Linux. Like for instance, you boot it, uh, like it flush the caches before like jumping to Linux or something like that. So, so this, this is a big issue we need to solve anyway. So then we also got like some funding from NLNet uh, to work on that. Uh, so now uh, we have the Galaxy S3 booting with an upstream kernel on uh, Android 9, uh, basically. Uh, we still need to integrate like audio networking and so on. And like we, we also like try to do too much things at once, like making conference, working on bootloaders and <laughs> making like si still replicant six release. So it's uh, slow down the work as well. Uh, yeah, so future direction, like finish uh, the research on the bootloader, basically. Um, we also need to look into the PinePhone and the LibreM5 because if we manage to support like the Galaxy S3 like fully upstream or almost upstream, then the main difference would be only the modem in it. So we would need like to uh, find a way to use like a GNU Linux modem stack uh, to support this. And hopefully there is a real it's a, like radio hardware. Uh, uh, I don't remember what it means, but uh, it's the like modem manager in GNU Linux, uh, it's it's a hardware abstraction for the modem protocol, and there is someone who wrote a version in Java <laughs> that uh, can interface with Ophono, so we could like start using Ophono uh, to handle like a GNU Linux device and probably even the device we already support. Uh, if we had support for the modem protocol, uh, the Samsung IPC uh, modem protocol. And we want like really like to share more and more work uh, with GNU Linux because uh, like GNU Linux upstream is more aligned with our goals. Like we want like fully free software everywhere if we can. And yeah, Android is like <laughs> upstream is less aligned with that. So yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, uh, do you have some uh, questions? Uh, yeah. Yes. So I thought Android 9 required Vulkan support. Ah, uh, we don't. Um, so the question was if we were running Android 9 on, on top of the Galaxy S3, and that Android 9 was requiring uh, Vulkan support. Uh, currently, like we don't even have like 3D acceleration. Uh, we never had basically. Uh, we patched the system to make it work with 2D. Uh, I can answer that yeah. more in, in detail. Uh, Vulkan yeah. is only... No, ah, you need a microphone. microphone. Sorry. Uh, green. Okay, so Vulkan is only mandatory in Android 9, it's good here, uh, for new devices. So all old ones can still use OpenGL ES. So we can run Android 9 with... Uh, right now we are using software rendering. So we have Mesa and it is doing software rendering with LLVM pipe to do uh, OpenGL ES and it's working for Android 9. So it's a requirement for, me, for new devices. Maybe in the future, maybe 10 or 12 or something, we'll require it for everything. And then we have a problem. We can also solve it with software rendering. There is this thing called Swift Shader from Google that does Vul Vul Vulkan on the, the CPU. We will probably have some, uh, it will be slow, but it's a path forward. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, that would be really useful for us. Because our goal was to use Mesa and not Swift Shader as, as our main software renderer. Mesa has several advantages compared to, to Swift Shader. So if that comes out, that would be really good for us. So it's a, maybe I repeat the question. Uh, um, so you just said that LLVM pipe, uh, there is someone working on a Vulkan uh, compatibility layer on top of LLVM pipe, because LLVM pipe only does OpenGL ES right now. Uh, 
Uh, uh, yeah, uh, also on tablets, like in Replicant 6, we support like uh, uh, six tablets, uh, basically. Uh, yeah. But r right now we are uh, like doing the the port on Android 9, so we picked only uh, one device, and then we will add more and more devices later. Yes. So. So the, the, the comments was that some tablets use the like all winner uh, rock chip or M logic uh, system on the chip and it could be interesting. Uh, yes, of course, uh, some all winner like tablets are, are even have like some upstream support. Uh, so since they have like even like free software bootloaders and some of the bootloaders are even upstream in U-boot, it, it could be like really really interesting. Uh, Although the the main focus on the replicant project is uh, still smartphone, but we we try to support uh, tablet along the way as well, and yeah, we I think we will. So I mean for replicant nine. Uh, for machines that are understood that the phone that has uh, the best support are the Samsung uh, Note two and Samsung S three, and uh, most important thing that's lacking there is the modem support. So uh, at the moment, there's not um, any phone yet that's fully usable as a phone on replicant. Uh, with upstream kernel? Yeah. Uh, like uh, the question was uh, the yeah. Uh, the comment was the the question was if the S3 and the Note 2 were the best supported phone, and uh, then uh, since the modem is supported is not supported by upstream. The question was if there was a phone fully usable by replicant with upstream kernel, right? Uh, no, we are working on it. Yeah. So you you probably have like other phones that are that have better upstream support, like the N900, but you have 256 megs of RAM, and for Android it would be really complicated and really a lot of effort probably to support that uh, small RAM size. Yeah, but uh, like. Um the modem is working on Replicant 6. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a clarification. Uh, the modem, uh, so phone calls and SMS and mobile data are working on Replicant 6, which is using uh, the, the vendor's uh, kernel. So, yeah. Currently, there are Replicant smartphones that can, can be used uh, as, as phones, but it's just uh, Replicant 6. And it's based on the vendor uh, kernel. Yeah. So. So, because the, our goal now into the, into the future is to only support devices that have upstream support in Linux. Yeah, mainline the, kernel. Yeah, yes. mainline kernel. That's the, the goal now. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, between replicant four and nine. No, yeah. I, I think there are more than uh, uh, one of those things. Uh, ah, least, uh, I understand now. Patch for, uh, yeah. Fired, uh, kernel, but, uh, so the the question I will rephrase completely is that you have a GTA 04 that was supported by replicant 4.2 and that was not supported by replicant six. And you want to know like how much effort it is. Uh, so the main issue with that will probably be uh, the RAM because on some modern some models you have 512 megs of RAM. On some you have like one gigs of RAM, which is like the same than the S3. Uh, but beside that, it's the same than S3 4G. Basically, um, like this one has a yeah I, I forgot about this one sorry. Uh, this one has a good upstream support also, uh, uh, but the the modem protocol is not the same. So I think once we have like Ophono, uh, I'm not sure on like the state of support of this modem in, uh, in Ophono. But if we can use that, it should be like pretty easy to do, assuming like the RAM is not too much a problem. So. It's mainly the modem that differ then. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm, I'm actually putting uh, an SSL6 here. Ah. Uh, but okay. this airport is broke. Ah, so, yeah. yeah. The, the comment he was that he was actually booting Replicant 6 on uh, GTR 04, but it's uh, like really slow. Uh, yeah, maybe we won't comment on what makes graphic fast. Or <laughs> because w w one of the possibility would be like the graphic that is slow or maybe the RAM. I don't know. Uh, my issue is that I don't do the, the hardware of the GTA 04 uh, by heart. But the, are we doing software rendering on, on that? Yes. One? Yeah, okay. So it will become harder and harder. Because software rendering uses quite uh, a, little, uh, a lot of RAM, and then you have the Android system using uh, a really good chunk. And uh, on each Android version, <laughs> it requires more and more RAM, so it will be very hard to support it in future versions. Yeah. And the, the thing also is that um, the color formats that are used from the application up to the display engine, like if you keep the same, you've got like decent performance. But if you like one color conversion, it kills really the performance. So this is what makes like software rendering possible on Replicant is just like keeping the same color format. Yeah, so Replicant 6, for instance, has a lot of patches to keep everything using the same color, color format to avoid uh, those kinds of uh, conversions. Yeah. Ah, uh, the question. Uh, yeah. yeah, the question was what is the state of Lima graphics driver? Uh, from the last word, uh, actually, there is a person somewhere in the room back there that should yeah. can answer you perf perfectly that question. But the last word I got from them is that it's actually running. I think it, it, it will be already good enough for the rep for rep Replicant 9. Somebody already tested it, so somebody could boot Replicant 9 with the Lima driver. So it works on these devices, and it will be something we will do uh, afterwards. <laughs> right now, we are foc focusing on software rendering, because we, if we get that one good enough, we, are, we can make sure that we can support any device. So we are trying to go for the broad spectrum first, and then we will focus on making uh, Lima run on these devices. But it's actually good, and it seems to be running fine, and it's enough for and, uh, Android 9. <coughs> the main question will be, what happens when uh, Google requires Vulkan support? Because the, ar the, the hardware that Lima targets cannot run v Vulkan. It's not capable. It's too old for, for that. It, it has a non-unified architecture and lots of problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I can yeah. I'm almost assure you that on, on Replicant 9, we will have it uh, being used. So we will have a fast graphics performance. I cannot tell you about the after that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. thanks. After so the, the software rendering, we will, we will go for, for that one, for sure. So the comment was that it's like it, was, it started being usable on Android and that more and more bugs are fixed, so we should try it. You mentioned the iPhone. Um, do you know whether other people, other groups, Lineage or SAP, are working on an Android too? I don't know. I didn't hear of it, so I don't know. Uh, the question was if line address was working on the Pine phone or the Android uh, distribution. Yeah, we've seen a lot of work from people from post-market OS and uh, Ubu ports and that are trying to run GNU Linux. We haven't seen uh, efforts from people trying to run Android on it. Uh, that's something we would like to do, but right now we are focusing on the S3. Then once we have this one stable, we'll probably go for that. But this, the team is too small to yeah. do, do that right now. And mm -hmm. like when when it will be like fully working on the S3, we will probably like look for collaboration for main, doing maintenance of the code because it could support a lot of devices, including devices we don't want to support, like with modems that are aren't isolated. So other community might be interested. So I don't know. Yeah, so the point here is, replicant will only try to focus on devices that we feel are the best we have right now in terms of modem isolation, repressible battery. But since the work we are doing on upstreaming can be used by on other phones, if somebody is willing to do that work, 
Come along. Zanya, your a question? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.